Good morning all. Uh, this is a continuation class for clinical diagnosis of dental caries uh, in which we will be learning about radiographic methods for uh, diagnosing caries. Uh, the radiographic methods, they have a greater value in the detection of carious lesions which are not readily be determined by clinical examination, especially on the smooth surface caries on the proximal side. As we already learned that there are, these are the problematic areas or hidden areas as we do not have direct uh, visual access uh, to the proximal surfaces, such areas uh, or uh, subgingival areas or root caries can be detected by radiographic methods as they do have certain limitations because radiographs are two dimensional images not complete, uh, they will not give a complete uh, um, carious extension three dimensionally. Although intraoral radiographs are uh, generally used uh, uh, radiographs to determine the caries extent uh, occlusally from the enamel to dentin towards the pulp, uh, they play a very important role in caries detection. Uh, they, their limitations need to be taken into account especially when they are used for detection of uh, incipient and hidden caries lesions. So, the majorly intraoral radiographs are used for uh, detection of the occlusal caries. For the proximal caries, we will be using bite wind radiograph or periophical radiograph, panorobic radiograph. These are the common radiographic techniques that is being used for diagnosing the caries. A conventional bite wing radiograph, uh, this discloses the sites inaccessible to other methods like visual or tactile methods. Uh, it records the coronal portion of both maxillary and mandibular teeth in one image uh, and it detects uh, interproximal caries. It also evaluates the height of allular bone. These are the various advantages of a bite wing radiograph uh, helps in detecting the interproximal caries where we do not have direct access usually by visual or tactile methods. This is the assessment that is being given uh, 0 to 5 codes. In the first picture line diagram shows there is no visible radiolucency interproximally near the contact area if you observe. Number 1 denotes the radiolucency in the outer half which you can see, 2 denotes ra radiolucency in the inner half, uh, uh, 3 denotes the radiolucency in the dentin uh, but without obvious spread in the dentin. So, it is almost reached the uh, dentin enamel junction. Uh, D J. Uh, so, th uh, that is the number code number 3. The 4 denotes the radiolucency with obvious spread in the outer half of the dentin. Radiolucency with obvious spread in the inner half of the dentin, the code is given as 5. This is how the bite wing radiograph been uh, uh, assessed by giving various codes presence based on the presence of radiolucency uh, on the outer or inner half of the dentin or uh, extending towards the D E J. Panoramic radiography, this is usually a supplement to the intraoral periapical uh, uh, radiographs that is done in disabled persons, uh, uh, but it inherently drawback is uh, it lack uh, uh, image details, we cannot properly diagnose a carious lesions with uh, uh, OPGs, we, alre we always need an agent of bite wing radiographs or selected periapical radiographs for our diagnosis. The other uh, radiographic method is distal radiography. Uh, this is uh, uh, filmless or a wet, uh, there is no wet processing here. Uh, there is a direct uh, distal imaging or indirect distal imaging, there are various techniques for it. RVG is one of the distal uh, uh, radiography. So, we have seen uh, intraoral periapical radiographs, bite wing radiographs, panoramic radiographs, a distal radiograph, these are the various regular radiographic methods has been used for assessing uh, diagnosis. Uh, caries. Uh, there is one more method for uh, uh, detecting the caries is caries detection dyes. Uh, there are various dyes that is being applied on the tooth surface uh, to detect the caries whether the caries is extending only into the enamel or into the dentin. Uh, the enamel caries to detect the enamel caries uh, we will use like calcitin, zyglob, procyon and brilliant blue whereas for dental caries, fucicin, acid red system, methylene blue these are the dyes being used for detecting the caries. Uh, the procyon dyes has it, it causes irreversible staining which is not clinically uh, acceptable because uh, uh, during the process of diagnosis we should not cause some permanent damage to the tooth structures uh, or permanent staining to the tooth structure. These dyes should only should help us to uh, assess the extent of the caries. 
So, the, the, what does how what does this dyes do is they neither stain the bacteria nor uh, delineated the bacterial phone, but it stains the collagen that is associated with lead mineralized organic matrix. Uh, so, how do you know uh, whether it is an enamel and dental caries because each uh, specific dye will uh, stain the collagen matrix. So, the routine use of these uh, dyes without an understanding of the distinct limitations will result in excessive removal of totally sound tooth structure and increased likelihood of uh, mechanical pulp exposures. Uh, so, one should be very uh, cautious about using these dyes, we should understand the mechanism of uh, uh, dyes uh, uh, and we should be cautiously uh, used for uh, uh, operative dentistry treatment planning. In order to come, in, in, to, come to a conclusion, uh, the diagnosis of caries activity is more important than caries severity. The combination of more than one diagnostic tool is recommended for diagnostic purposes. Uh, each diagnostic tool has some limitations at different level of severity. So, from here by uh, I am concluding the basic methods of uh, uh, diagnosing the dental caries by cl clinical and radiographic method. There are so many advanced methods uh, uh, in determining or in diagnosing the caries. Uh, you will be learning recent advances and various uh, recent uh, uh, advanced radiographic methods in order to uh, diagnose uh, caries in the next lecture. Thank you.